I'm Grace Tsai Kim. I'm the executive director of the Dragon Kim Foundation. The mission of our foundation is to inspire our youth to serve their communities while discovering and pursuing their passions. We established the Dragon Kim Foundation in 2015. Uh, my husband, Daniel and I, we lost our 14 year old son, Dragon. And in losing him, we established the foundation. So we got into nonprofit in a very sudden way. I had spent a career in consumer marketing. I'd worked for companies like Allergan and ConAgra Foods and Yahoo. So I, nonprofit was a whole new world for me. And um, a friend of mine actually at 1OC had um, discussed with me the coaching opportunities of executive coaches of Orange County. And when she mentioned it to me, I kind of jumped at the chance. I really, you know, I, I'm one who, um, you know, if I want to learn how to play tennis, I could look it up or I could go get a tennis coach. And I just think, you know, why not go to a professional that has done this for a living that knows what they're doing and can really help me. So when she explained um, that this was a service, you know, with people that have been in the industry, people that want to give up their time and that it was free, um, I really jumped at that opportunity. I'm Monica Horner, and I'm an executive coach with Executive Coaches of Orange County. Grace was actually my first client when I joined EC of OC back in 2016. During that time, Grace's organization was brand new. So she was putting together the board and also looking for funding sources. And with my background in fundraising uh, development for nonprofit, I was able to answer her questions and kind of set her at ease. But also during that time, I noticed that Grace was taking a lot on. She was wearing many hats. As founder and executive director of the Dragon Kim Foundation, she was putting in a lot of hours um, at her organization. And so I quickly saw that she was going to burn out very soon. I think that when you're an executive director, you really need somebody who's a confidant that you can, you know, talk to and, um, you know, share your trials and tribulations with. And a lot of times, you know, you don't want to share that with your board. You don't want to share that with the people that you're serving because you're the executive director. You're supposed to be in charge and you're supposed to know what you're doing. And being able to have Monica just be there with me where I could share with her, I'm feeling overwhelmed and I don't know how to deal with this. You know, having her as a sounding board, as a confidant, as a coach, uh, you know, I, I think that that's been instrumental. I, I feel really lucky because Monica and I, I think we just hit it off, um, you know, pretty, pretty right away. It's just been great having her to be somebody that can coach me through things and, um, you know, listen to me and help me through situations. Well, I helped Grace realize that she can't do it all. Although she's a highly competent individual, she's talented, um, she can multitask. She, it's not a good idea for her to do that because of burnout. So we went over the concept of burnout and what it does to an individual and uh, what it does to the organization. So ultimately she was able to let go. She was able to delegate to others. You know, her organization was brand new. So she didn't have a big budget to hire a team, but we started with uh, looking for volunteer interns. And then eventually once she was able to raise more money, she was able to form a small paid team around her. So I walked her through that process. But I think she also benefited from my listening to her, having a confidant, somebody who she could bounce ideas off of, uh, kind of a sounding board. And, you know, as soon as she let go and as soon as she trusted that process, real breakthroughs started happening for her. She was able to find more funding and thus was able to provide uh, more services to the youth in the community. When I think about this question of would you get an executive coach, I think that, you know, to be honest, my reaction is why wouldn't you get an executive coach? You know, I, I think the thing that's been great about it is um, a couple things. You know, number one, as I mentioned, having that confidant, somebody that you can talk to and that you can benefit from their experience. You know, they've done this for years and they've got a whole network of other coaches that they can rely on and um, consult with if they need advice on a particular issue. So being able to take advantage of their uh, expertise number one. I think, you know, on, on top of that, just being able to have somebody that I was uh, accountable to on a monthly basis. And I knew that I would have the time with them to, you know, talk about my worries, talk about my dreams, talk about my accomplishments. Um, it kept me accountable in a really nice way, um, in sort of a low pressure way, you know, having a coach um, do that for me, be there for me has been amazing. You know, this pandemic has brought on uh, more change than ever before. And I think that nonprofit leaders could really benefit right now from having a confidant, having a coach, 
someone to listen to them, someone to help guide them through uh, their daily work, through problems, and also through um, celebrations. You know, sometimes as nonprofit professionals, we are going through the hamster wheel so fast that we don't even stop to realize the wonderful things that are taking place within the organization. And so having that coach to be there with them through the ups and the downs is so important, especially right now.